so we've reached the letter T in our dog's alphabet and we've chosen an extremely rare breed. So rare, in fact, that just one year, nine months ago in Britain, there were only 10 puppies, no adult dogs at all. Well, today there are 17 adults and 35 puppies, some of which have been bred in Europe and North America. Here are two of them, and looking at how huge they are, you won't be surprised to learn that they're used as guard dogs. They're Tibetan Mastiffs, and they really are powerful dogs indeed. And I've only known them a few hours, but so far they've been very friendly with me. Let's hope that keeps up. They're owned by Mrs. Connett of the New Forest. Mrs. Connett, welcome to Blue Peter. Now, are they a handful? Just a bit, yeah. Hard to look after at home? Uh, not at home, no. Just with strangers. Right. So you've got to be a little bit wary of them. Yes. Now, let's introduce the dogs. First of all, the bitch. Uh, she is called Magoo of Conriki. We just call her Magoo for short. She is 34 kilos in weight. She's 61 centimetres high. She's two years old. And as you can see, she's got a lovely blue-grey coat with lovely markings above her eyes. And the dog, wait for this one, he's called Akbar de la Tour de Chandos. But thankfully, his nickname is Barney. <laughs> now, he hits the scales at 45 kilos. He's a bit taller than Magoo. He's two years old as well, and he's got this blue-gray coat and some markings. Now, as the name suggests, Tibetan Mastiffs originally came from the Himalayas and uh, Central Asia, and they were particularly popular in Tibet. The uh, Buddhist monks used to use them as guard dogs to guard their monasteries and temples, and so the dogs ended up with the reputation of being the most ferocious dogs in the world. The Buddhist monks also used to place this special yak wool collar around the necks and dye it red. We got this one from the Liverpool Museum. And it's placed around the dog's necks just to make them look a bit more fierce. And I think it does as well. Now, the Tibetan name for the dogs is Doki, which means outdoor working dog. And a particular distinctive feature of them is this really thick coat to protect them from the freezing cold mountain nights. Well, six and a half weeks ago, Barney and Magoo produced some really healthy puppies. And Janet's with them now. Look at this for a little basket full. There's three little puppies, two lads, they're called Kong and Kompo, and a girl called Karma. And even though they're just six weeks old, they weigh 20 kilos, which I shall test for myself when I put them down. It's all right, woman, I'm just going to give them some tea. They're going to have some minced tripe, cereal, and goat's milk. And you give them goat's milk because it's less fat for them than cow's milk, isn't that right? There now, Magoo gets a little bit protected, doesn't she? Yeah. At this point, right, because yeah. she, she realises that a stranger is handling her puppies. But she's, she's, she's very really wonderful, yeah. Right. Mm. Yeah, look, tuck it in. Well done. Now, you can see from uh, the puppies' shoulders and paws that they've got a lot of growing to do. And uh, just to see how big they can go, uh, we've got four 14 week old Tibet, Tibetan uh, Mastiff puppies over there. And they're owned by Mr. and Mrs. Hall of Leyland. And you can see just how huge they are. Mr. Hall says that there were 10 pups in the litter, making it a British Tibetan Mastiff record for puppies. And they're here today with their father, Rio, who is four years old and is absolutely huge. He's owned by Mrs. Giles of Ripley, and I think he's probably the most impressive looking um, Tibetan Mastiff in the country. He's a beautiful golden color, which has um, been inherited by some of the pups. Now, there are two bitches in the litter called Portia and Nasha. And, and Tasha, sorry, and they were actually the first gold-coloured Tibetan pups ever to be born in Britain. And of the two dogs, there's one called Drap, who's a gold-coloured one, and his brother Chang, who's black and tan, and they're all tucking into their tripe there. Now, as Mark said, Tibetan Mastiffs are very protective dogs, so we've had to keep Rio and the puppies over on this side of the studio as far away as possible from Magoo and her puppies. <laughs> yes, we've had great fun keeping them apart, though. There have been puppies absolutely everywhere, and Bonnie's looked bewildered by the whole thing, <laughs> and Willow particularly. Yes, indeed. They're gorgeous, though, aren't they? It'd be nice if one of these grew up to be a Craft Supreme champion, wouldn't yes, it? Nice, yeah. Thank you, Mrs. Connor. 